Well, the last of the summer patterns are published. Simplicity released their summer collection a couple of days ago. They didn't really do a decent job or really anything at all of announcing this. I The only reason I know that there were new patterns is because one of my hem ciders um, messaged me about it. So maybe that is all to come, but we are gonna take a look at all the new patterns um, together today. So sit back, grab some tea, and let's have some fun. Okay, so this very first one is a released pleat dress. Those are always a lot of fun. Very cute. Okay, so it's got like a, you know, a very modest V neckline, really high in the arm side. I made a simplicity pattern here recently and I had that same problem. So that might be something that I just start checking on the regular with simplicity is how deep their arm side is cut. But the reverse pleat is this that's happening here. So there are maybe three or four different pleats and they open up on the bust to give room for the bust and then they open up to give room for the hip. So cool, right? I love it in this little plaid. It looks really sweet in gingham. Stripes are a fun choice too. And they even have them in the back, which just creates a beautiful silhouette. Oh goodness. Here she is with her baby. <laughs> That's kind of random, um, but okay. And this one happens to be like, a, it's not high low, or is it? Or is it just asymmetrical? Yeah, I think it's equally high in the center back as it is in the center front and long on the sides. And then it looks like, oh, this is a fun little graphic. Or is this the cover? Yeah, these are their new covers. That's right, I forgot. Very quote unquote simple. Um, okay, so we've got this version here and then we've got one with a straight across like ankle length hem and then we've got a shorter hem length and also this like puff sleeve. That's really cute. And you guys, it's they're really easy to make. There's not much to it at all. No waistbands, you know what I mean? Like nothing fussy, just a couple of pleats and you're good to go. All right, so the fabrics are cotton, chambray, gingham, linen, cotton, lawn, gauze, pop. Yeah, there's going to be a ton. So basically any of the stable wovens and they happen to go in the direction of like summer stable wovens. So all of these are super breathable, um, easy to wear you know, like not too hot, um, and a hundred percent cotton or linen. So that's what you should be looking for. You need a invisible zipper and some bias tape for the, um, neckline and the arm side. I'm pretty sure this neckline has the bias tape too. And then we have here, fabric requirements. Yes. It's going to take a lot of fabric because in order to, you know, create all those pleats, you have to keep adding to the width of the bodice. So yeah, it's a fabric eater. Um, but what you get in the end is, is really cute. I think, I mean, look at view C five yards. I can't tell you the last time I bought five yards of anything. Um, and then we do have some finished garment measurements down here that are actually helpful to us while we're shopping. I mean, the links are nice whenever you're actually making the garment, but the uh, bus measurement is nice to have when you're shopping to help you pick your size, but it is a fairly uh, roomy bust. So, you know, it's not a very close fitting dress. So keep that in mind whenever you're picking your size. So cute. Good start. Perfect. Um, do we, yeah, we saw all that. Okay, cool. The sizes, I don't think we went over. So six to 14 and then 16 to 24. So they are exactly mimicking what's happening with McCall's and Butterick. And as is the price, 1537. Maybe this will be knocked down on some kind of sale whenever the collection is like starting to get marketed and announced publicly. Um, you know, maybe that'll come down a few dollars. I don't know. Okay, now we have a cross back dress. Is cross back not just like the thing of the season? This one isn't as showy though. We also, we'll see here in a second, but the back details are coming through. 
this year. So this one is a very high, almost bateau type of neckline, like an oblong oval type shape. The arm side here looks pretty good actually. So you can see the bust dart comes in right about here and I feel like her bust apex is somewhere around this area. So it is a little bit low and it makes you wonder, you know, if you pulled this up at the shoulder seam, then it would be too high on the neck. Um, the arm side is okay. So you probably just have to move the dart. That would probably be the best move, but you know, it could just be a low dart, but something to check out if you're going to make this. Um, and then it does look like it has an, a waistband. Um, and then this, I don't know if this is a separate belt or what, but it does look like there is some waist defining seams going on here. So that's good. And then is this an actual placket? Oh, it's really hard to tell. It kind of just looks, I mean, they did such, if it is a placket, they did such a good job matching the stripes that it kind of just looks like buttons sewn down the middle <laughs> of a skirt. So we'll have to look at that a little bit closer. This little, whatever that is, makes me feel like it is an actual placket that you can essentially unbutton if you wanted. Um, it's a sweet little simple design. The back is really cute, how it crosses over. It almost looks like you could wear it reversible either way. You could turn this to the front um, and have this be the back or swap it around and do it this way. But I appreciate that. It also looks like because of this, it might be a true wrap. Oh gosh, this is hard to, this is hard to pick apart just from these pictures. But okay, so based on this, oh, but no, it has darts in the front. Okay, so you can sew it Wow, that's really confusing. So I think that what happens with B is that it's a V-neck, it's a wrap in the front and in the back. Let's look at the line drawings. Okay, so A is crew neck. And then the back of A is wrap. Okay, got it. And then B is a wrap in the front, but it is does have a high back. So they just swap out those pattern pieces, I guess. I wonder if there's a separate piece with this bust dart. So interesting. And then, yeah, it looks like this is a true wrap, but they give you this. I'm really confused. Um, Mrs. Dress with cross front or back is how it's described. And hold on, let me skip to this real quick so I can see. Yeah, Mrs. Dress with cross front or back. They don't give you any descriptions um, with simplicity. It's kind of a free for all sometimes. Okay, but outside of the actual design being a little bit confusing and not fully understanding what what you're going to be making outside of that um the fabrics they recommend are wovens anything from super lightweight like shally all the way up to your like uh more stable cottons like chambray gingham even linen pk is a pretty substantial fabric poplin sateen as we know is is very substantial seersucker, shirtings, silky types. So anything from like a light to mid-weight woven they are recommending, which is great. That makes it a wonderful pattern for um, stash busting because you probably have a ton of fabrics in your stash that, that fall into this category. Okay, so for the notions you need, thread obviously, an invisible zipper, single fold bias tape, which I think is for the arm side, maybe also the neckline. Um, and you need six buttons or five buttons, depending on the length that you're going to be making. Here is the fabric requirements. A is a little, the longest version, I think, or maybe B is. And then C is the shortest version. But 
still, no matter what version you're making, you only need about two and a half yards, depending on your size, two to two and a half ish. Finished garment measurements are included here, which is great. I feel like, I feel like the big four, it's like each company, each brand, like why can't they all just do what is right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like simplicity is great because you get your finished garment measurements, but it's lacking because there's really no description of the pattern at all. McCall's is great because they have a detailed uh, description, but there's no finished garment measurements. Like, can't they all just get on the same page about their envelope packs and just have it be standardized? Like, this is what each one of our pattern backs are going to look like. Like, I don't understand why they have to look different. Like, it should be providing the same information across the board. Oh, so frustrating. Okay, but so, yeah, finished garment measurements. It is a pretty loose-fitting um, top or bodice and then the hip um to be expected is a little bit wide because it's a it's a um you know a-line skirt if you're making the version where the wrap is in the front and you have this much ease i would definitely make a muslin because we don't have a version that's modeled it's hard to tell how loose and gaping that is going to end up being but even in this version i mean that's, this is pretty loose fitting on her. And if this were a wrap, um, you know, it would, it would stand away from the body a little bit. So just something to keep in mind there if you're going to be making alternate versions. All right, sizes are 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24. And did we see everything else? Yeah, I guess so. There's no more information. So decent start. I mean, it's a good... I mean, I probably have a dozen patterns or more that I could um, do a little bit of hacking and get something like this. But if you're just now building up your stash, it's, it would be a good little basic to start with. Okay, now we have this little number. Lots of stripes so far. They're calling this just a Mrs. Dress. So we've got a raglan sleeve. Very high neckline, which is surprising for summer that we've seen so many high necklines, right? You would think maybe something a little bit more breathable, but nonetheless. And then you've got a bust start here. This actually is placed really well for her, I think. And then a gathered skirt with patch pockets and hits just above the knee. Here's kind of a full picture. Same pose. Here's the back. Very nice, invisible zipper, nothing weird. Here's the pattern cover. Okay, so some other options we have are a longer sleeve and then color blocking. And again, this takes me back to, if we're gonna have this higher price point, that's fine, but I'm gonna need something more than just a little optional pocket and sleeve length you know what i mean like give me another skirt option give me a bodice with a different neckline like competing with the indies is not just about raising your price point you also have to match them in terms of the variety they offer with each and every one of their patterns here are our line drawings so if you're not doing the patch pockets, you do have um, side seam pockets. I think you could make some interesting versions of this for sure. The raglan is definitely an interesting um, option that you might not have a lot of. I mean, this is like a pretty basic skater dress silhouette. Um, or dirndl is right isn't it also called a dirndl and um having a raglan option for that bodice is something that might add a little bit of variety to your pattern stash i feel certain though that i have a raglan bodice of something somewhere that i can attach to a gathered skirt you know 
but I can imagine making it also with some fun trim in here. I mean, it's a blank slate. You can really do so much with a basic pattern like this. All right, next, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I guess I was gonna say next, let's take a look at the uh, pattern back envelope. Fabrics are cotton and cotton types, chambray, flannel, gingham, lightweight denim, linen, PK, poplin, sateen, and knits. And that's just how basic of a pattern it is. This is every fabric that exists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what did they leave off? Super, super lightweight fabrics? Okay, fine. So no chalet, but everything else? That's funny. Okay, thread, invisible zipper, hook and eye, and then single fold bias tape. I think, I think that's the other thing that Simplicity has started to do now is to keep their patterns super simple. And I have to remember, I keep calling these patterns basic, but I think that's what Simplicity is going for. Simple, basic, you know, be very beginner friendly patterns. And I think that that's what the single fold bias tape is all about. You, you know, finish off your uh, necklines that way, your sleeveless um, arm size that way, and it prevents you from needing to know how to do a facing or a lining or anything like that. So I think we're going to see a lot of bias tape uh, with these patterns. Fabric requirements are less than two and a half yards, almost across the board. That's great. Great little stash buster. C does have a contrast sleeve, so just remember that if you're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, but a contrast sleeve could be cool, like if you did like a black sateen, for example, and like a leather sleeve, that would be super cute. Um, obviously a little bit more fall, but you could do like a sateen and a lace sleeve. That would be really pretty. This, this is just such a blank slate. You can do so much with this. Fab, I mean, sizes are 6 to 14 and then 16 to 24. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you can hack this up, you know, if you're a little bit more advanced. But I just feel like those of us that can hack don't really want to. <laughs> I don't know. I find myself... If it's a basic hack, like doing a neckline, I'm just like, why didn't you just include that in your $15 pattern? Oh, man. All right, I'm going to try and get off that soapbox completely here because I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. But All right, so next up we have this interesting dress. Uh, again, high neckline with gathers that come down into a gathered, oh my, a gathered, I don't even know, this is like a channel for the belt. And then I think it's gonna tie in the back. The sleeve I think is dolman or drop shoulder. Um, and then you have the, yeah, drop shoulder here, you can see that, and then you have this full sleeve and then you also have teardrop pockets, which you can see through <laughs> this fabric. So I can tell that it's not anchored into the waist seam like I like, but that's easy enough to fix. It is, um, you know, midi length and has slits on both sides. I think this is probably a gauze and white gauze is just so hard to make it look fashion-y. Like this is a surgeon's um, scrubs, right? Or a hospital gown even. You just anticipate it having those terrible little ties in the back, you know, where <laughs> it ties up and keeps your back exposed. Um, yeah, white gauze or any kind of textured type of fabric like that is going to be really tough. They didn't give her any accessories hardly. She's got one little ear cuff and some bracelets and that's it. Maybe a necklace might have helped, but you know, obviously they're trying to not hide the neckline. So in a way, I guess I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, this, this is borderline like insane asylum 
uniform. It does tie in the back. It has an invisible zipper. White is just so, so hard. It is cute too without the sleeve on it. But again, you don't get any options with this. You get, I think, maybe A is shorter. So you have a knee length chop here and then you have an option of adding this sleeve or not and that's it and that's it that's frustrating i do feel like you could make this little thing out of like a contrast like a leather or i don't know if this was patterned and this were solid i feel like you could add some some fun interest by doing this out of contrast but Yeah, and I don't even know, like, if you did it in, I think any solid is going to be really tough to make this not look like it belongs in a hospital somewhere. A print could be a little bit different, and leaving the sleeve off. And I bet the line drawings are adorable. I don't know, they're misshapen. <laughs> this is interesting. This is... This is really interesting. A, the back of A. So you sew this little thing on, but then you don't sew the, you don't attach the belt, and then you can have this like shift dress. A, B, C. Huh, I don't know why they showed this open like that. I guess to show you, this is optional, even this guy, okay fine but they should have shown a like that they should have shown the front of a that way oh lord okay fabrics are chambray cotton lawn cotton types gauze lightweight linen shirting silky types wool yeah so these are going to be all of your stable wovens anything really in the cotton section silky types okay sure not too, too lightweight though. Invisible zipper and elastic. So you must be making your own bias binding to finish the neckline. And then almost three yards of fabric for the uh, short, well, two and a half yards of fabric for the short sleeve version. Ironically, the same amount to add the sleeve, and then the longer version, you need a little bit more fabric. Finished garment measurements, very loose fitting in the bust. And they didn't even put the waist on there at all because it's so voluminous. There you have it. All right, oh, the sizes are six to 14 and then 16 to 24. All right, here's something that might redeem that last one. We have a V-neck. This is probably a linen. Uh, drop shoulder with this sleeve added. And then you have this little released dart or pleat, pleat going down and then possibly one going up on e either side of that. That's kind of cool. And then you have the option of tying on this self um, little tie belt. It's very, very long, it wraps around twice. And then there is side seam pocket, possibly. And then it has a curved hem with a slit. That's kind of cool. Here's the back. Yeah, just cinched in with the belt. Again, a curved hem. And then here are all of our options. So we have a long version with an additional little stand collar. That's cute. And then it also has this little detail here. So it does release 
into the body, but there, this is not a pleat. This is just a gather from the belt. So it's just the one detail down the center and then um, deep side slits. And then this version is the same neckline as she has, possibly the same sleeve. I can't totally tell if all three of these sleeves are the same, but this one is shortened into a top and they added three little buttons. So that's kind of a cute detail. Um, let's look at the line drawings first. Kind of already took them in. I think her sleeve might be a little bit longer than this, right? That definitely looks um, shorter to me. And then here they did it again where they show the belt on the front, but don't show it on the back, which is like, I can discern that that's what's happening, but somebody else who's new to this may not. They may be like, I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe they get it. And this, I would just be nervous that, just be cautious of looking like you're part of the clergy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it, it is borderline robe, robish. Um, so just be mindful of your fabric choice with that. It could be really pretty in like a lightweight tropical print or something. I'm thinking like a caftan type of thing, like a caftan with a little bit more shaping. Fabrics are linen, double gauze. Again, careful with both of those um, with the long version. Soft cottons, chambray, silky types like Georgette, rayon, and crepe. I wish they did that more. Silky types such as these three things. Because silky types, I mean, you guys know that runs the gamut of um, good and bad. <laughs> Um, thread and three buttons for the top version. It comes in alphanumeric sizing, extra, extra small to extra, extra large. And then, yeah, so the long version, you need three and a half yards almost across the board. The dress with the belt, oh, two and three quarters about, two and a half, two and, oh, all the way up to three and an eighth, so depending on your size. And then the tunic is about two yards. The finished bust measurements are here. Again, very roomy. Okay. All right. So that is the relaxed v-neck dress. Next up, we have a relaxed pullover dress. Again, more stripes, but this one has a scoop neckline. Again, a <laughs> drop shoulder with a sleeve sewn on. Again, that's probably to make it simpler and easier to sew. So I'm respectful of that. That's fine. I get everybody has to start somewhere. This one has a gathered skirt, self belt, and then maybe even a shaped, yeah, this definitely has like a shape to it in addition to the gathers. I do not think she has her hands in her pockets, but I can't totally tell. And does this have a center front seam also? Do, do we see these stripes converging right through here? So there might be a center front seam there as well. Here's another photo. Very loose fitting through here. I mean, look at these folds that this is creating. I mean, that is a loose waist. They have tied this pretty much pulling it in as much as they can to give her a waist. So, and then this is a pocket. This is definitely a pocket. So here it is from the back. And this is what I'm always like on the fence about with these type of cocoon skirts. You know, obviously it adds volume. These, this little cocoon happens to fall. I don't, that might be at her knee, maybe, um, maybe just above the knee. So that is 
not unflattering. Sometimes they can fall right at your hip and it's just like so wide, especially for someone like me who already has a disproportionate <laughs> hip to width ratio, hip to waist ratio. But yeah, you can see here that there's a center back seam in the skirt as well. The top does have a little V. Again, makes me think you can make it reversible. I mean, there's nothing about the sleeve that couldn't be reversible, right? It would just be where the pocket is. So if you prefer a little V-neck, you could just swap it around. I don't even think there's bust darts. Here's the line drawing. So it is more of a square neckline than a scoop, like I had originally said. It does have a center front seam. And then you also have this version with just a straight A-line skirt um, that's, that hits at the knee. And then of course you can leave the sleeve off. I mean, it sure does look comfortable. Here's our line drawings. I mean, I've been making a uh, sort of grown on uh, extended shoulder pajama top like a lot now that pattern that I can't remember the number of but I've made like three versions of it here recently I could totally just take that and add you know a gathered skirt to the bottom and ta-da I've got this pattern um, I do, I do appreciate the draping that would go into this though. That could be dressed up, dressed down. I do like that. And I don't have a lot of patterns with this shape to it. I guess the pocket is in the side seam. They don't have the little notches like they normally do to indicate that there's a pocket, but isn't her hand definitely in a pocket? All right, fabric requirements are chalet, chambray, crepe. Crepe will be beautiful. That crinkle rayon that I have fallen in love with would be really great out of this too. Double gauze, linen. Double gauze would give it a very um, almost like peasant uh, yeah, like gardeny, garden, gardener type of vibe linen types and soft poplin also with knits with drapes such as interlock jersey velvet that's cool a very all-encompassing pattern which again i feel like when i started sewing when i started sewing i feel like this section here the fabric requirements was much more vague and it was very hard to learn about fabrics and to understand why they were suggesting the ones they were i feel like nowadays well, especially with this rebranding, they're doing a really good job of explaining the fabrics. Um, like they did the last one where they said silky types such as, like when I started sewing, when they said silky types, I was like, I don't, what is that? I don't know what a silky type is. Um, and even this, how there are so many options you could do with the knit or with the woven. Um, and they're very clear about, like I could type in interlock at a fabric store and or fabric site and interlock fabrics would appear you know you put in silky types and the search engines like yeah i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> um it does come in alphanumeric sizing and you do need a little bit of bias tape probably for that neckline um i imagine the bust yeah very loose fitting throughout um, maybe even one of those patterns where you might size down. Like typically I would make a medium, but that would give me eight inches of ease in my bust, which is just a lot. So I might size down knowing how um, roomy the entire, entire design is. Um, but just under two and a half, three yards of fabric, B and C take quite a bit more just because of the length and the volume of the skirt. Understandable. Okay. Next we have, oh wow. Dress with knit midriff. Okay. Um, 
why does it have to be so big and low? Hmm, okay, so you've got a scoop neckline, grown on, dolman sleeve, no darts. You gather this all into this rib knit, and then you attach this really short skirt with side seam pockets. That is just weird. Like, shouldn't it start here and go to through her natural waist and then end here? Oof. I don't know, guys. I guess I could appreciate the concept. Oh man. I'm trying to even think of like the rib knits that have like the stripes or. Oh, <laughs> I don't think that that would help it at all. Let's see what it says about fabric. Fabrics, batik, chambray, cotton types, crepe, double georgette, polyester, rayon, silky types, and soft linen. And then for the midriff, all they say is stretchable ribbed knit fabric. So contrast midriff, 18 inch to 20 inch tubular or 36 inch to 40 inch flat. Yeah, and this is a this is a no for me, dog. <laughs> um, but yeah, the drawing does have it drop below the hip like the high hip would be here waist is here so it is a low lower sitting band you do get this little notch collar version which okay and then you have side seam pockets in all three versions and then you also get no it's this bodice or this bodice so if you want the scoop neck, you're going to have to make the sleeve or just close this in. <laughs> oh man, we were doing so good. Uh, we were doing okay. <laughs> 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22 on this one. It's not even the color or the fabric. I don't, you know, know how normally we can be like, oh gosh, if it just was in a different fabric, I can see it being cuter. I just think that this is too, I don't know. I just don't like it, but I can be expected to love them all. So, okay. Mrs. Dress with shirred bodice. Here we go. Something fitted, but man, careful with that side boob. Wow. Okay. So it does have a shirt bodice, like it says, and then you, I think you, this is like a casing for this ribbon, or I guess it could be self fabric too. And then it ties at the um, shoulder. And then, and then you have tears. So all of this is one pattern piece and you shear the top part of it. Sure, I can never say that right. And then you add these um, tears to it. Oh, look at those cute shoes. Um, but no other jewelry, interesting. Here's the back, very similar to the front. This is fun. I've actually never made a shirt shirred uh, garment. I think I tried to do it once, and you know how it gets real finicky with how you wind the elastic on your bobbin. I think my old machine was just like rejecting <laughs> every attempt. And so I never went back to do it again, but it could be fun. And I have a shirt ready to wear top that I love and is very comfortable. So I don't know, maybe. And then you can also make this super short dress version, but you could also like leave off all the tiers and shorten this and make a little top. So just keep that in mind too, since they're not providing us with a lot of variety. It's cute, I think. I like even the one with all the tears. 
Um, okay, chambray, soft cotton, double georgette, gauze, linen, lightweight poplin, rayon, silky types, and wool. Again, I don't know a lot about shirring, so I don't know. Is a silky type harder to do that to? Like, I would think a soft cotton would be the safer way to go. That, I think, is what they used for her. Um, just, like, that is just, like, a cotton, uh, I was almost going to say broadcloth, but I don't think it's that. It's a little bit more drapey. I don't know. Those of you that have done shirring before, provide us with some insight in the comments as to what fabrics are best and easiest to do this with. Okay, three packages of seam binding and two packages of elastic, quarter inch wide elastic. So is this like a different way of doing the shirring? I had to use elastic thread in my bobbin. Is this a, a quarter inch wide elastic and seam binding method some way to make it easier or more doable on your home sewing machine? Does anybody know? I might get this just for the sake of like seeing how it all works, like a test, <laughs> just test it out and see what's going on here. I, I Like I said, I do, I do genuinely like the pattern itself too, but none of this is adding up to what I thought um, you had to have in order to sure something so okay um, you need a ton of fabric for this guy because of the gathered and so many tiers and it's very wide and voluminous almost well a little more than four and a half yards and then the shorter version yeah obviously you don't need near as much for that and then they didn't provide any garment measurements I think because the bust you make whatever size you want I think and then it's just so voluminous everywhere else it's negligible like it um <laughs> i was like it needs to let me out and, oh look at the size range 4 to 12 and then 12 to 20. that is so interesting huh all right. Yeah, I will check this out um, the next time I can find it on sale. I'm not going to pay $16 for it. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. Mrs. Top and Pants. Okay. So, okay. I'm getting Jedi vibes, right? Like this whole layered thing is if it were in like a tan color she'd be ready for Star Wars. But this is interesting. It's like a lapel, but without a collar. And then I'm pretty sure this is bias bound finish. And then, I mean, tell me these are elasticized pants, right? This is a nurse's scrubs with the little mini belt tie. The other version does not have the tie, but has this little loop with a button. Now, is that open like a like a vest? Yeah, because that's what this is. She has a top on underneath. Okay, and then yes, we have elasticized pants. This one again has the button on the hem to mimic this guy here and then you have this version without that detail right yeah two pants options and then two top options oh this one has this little guy in the back this could be really cool like I don't I'm not hating on this at all this with all of this just be careful about it could be super cute. I, I do think that it would be. I don't like it all matchy-matchy like they did. I think that's what adds to the Jedi vibe. <laughs> but I could totally see this with some leggings or some skinny jeans, jeggings, um, in a fun, bright color, and it being really, really cute. 
And it is very visually interesting for a simplicity pattern, right? If simplicity is focusing on being simple, this is a very non-simple, simple top. It's deceivingly simple. <laughs> the um, website does not want to work. Come on. What is happening? Okay. Uh, fabrics are soft linen, cotton, double gauze, poplin, sateen, especially for the pants, silky types such as shyly crepe and rayon. And then for the vest, B, the version she's wearing, wrong side of fabric on overlay will show. So that is very important for your fabrics like the silky types because a lot of times um, they can just be printed on one side or maybe even the linen, you know? Okay. And one button elastic bias tape, elastic and two buttons, depending on which version you're making. So yeah, combination of buttons and elastic. And then your vest, you need very little fabric for that, for a, B with the overlay, one and a half, and then here's your pants. And then the bust finished measurements, very loose fitting. Hip, not as, not as. I think it would be um, considered just loose fitting, not very loose fitting. I think it's got, oh, it's hard to say couple yards of ease, a couple inches of ease, which isn't a lot for pants. What is going on? Okay. The sizes are six to 14 and then 16 to 24. All right, now we have this little like loose layered look. So you guessed it, drop shoulder with a sleeve. This one is very wide. And then this has this little notch detail and a center front seam. The back has a little um, keyhole. And then again with the asymmetry on the hem. And then your pants are loose fitting, wide legged. I imagine they're elastic at the waist. So yeah, at least uh, around the sides and the back, they are gonna be elastic. And then your alternate version for the top is to have a longer sleeve with a button. I mean, it's very artsy, right? I'm getting very chic, very, depending on what fabrics, if you went with a monochromatic look, you know, it's something really silky and flowy and drapey that when you walked into the room, it like blows everything around. <laughs> but I could also see it in like a tropical situation as well. You know, no one's going on vacation anymore, but um, you know, I could see it like at a cabana with a real big hat. So maybe I'm being a little bit too creative because I'm just, I'm just daydreaming about a time when we have all these special places to go, okay? <laughs> Fabrics would be batik, chambray, cotton lawn, cotton types, gauze, linen, poplin, shirting, silky types, and voile. Lots and lots of options. And then you need buttons, bias tape, and elastic, depending on which version you're making and two-ish, two and a half yards for all of them. Very, very loose fitting top. Um, I'm surprised they even included these bust measurements to be honest. And then for the hip, you can tell the difference between the ease of this pant versus the last one, right? This one has, I think, five additional inches of ease. So that's what makes it very loose fitting. Okay, why won't it let me? It's like they didn't put the buttons in. 
I hope it's not my computer. My goodness. Um, sizes are 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. And now I don't know why that doesn't make it a women's pattern, especially considering how loose fitting it is, but if you're, if you're a woman who typically sews the plus size or women's patterns, I would check the sizing on this and see if it's something that you could make work for yourself. Okay, now we have uh, skirts and top. I assume this was a dress, but it's two separates. Again, with the questionably low arm size. It's like they're either like too high or too low. We need a Goldilocks arm size for simplicity. But I also think this is for knits, I think. But you've got the binding on the scoop neckline, binding on the armhole. They've tucked it into an elastic waist skirt with side seam pockets and a really significant um, single slit just across uh, your, I think it's your left leg, maxi length. Here's the back, beautiful. Although it does not, it's not level, but that could be because she's popped her knee. So I won't be too critical of that. But A is the top, C is the slit skirt, and then B is a skirt without a slit, but it has the seam still. So <laughs> I don't know if you can call that another version, but okay, fine, fine, fine. And then you have two lengths as well. Okay, so fine, two lengths. So B is a little bit shorter. But really all they did was take off, you know, eight inches or so from here and then sew up this seam. So that's really hard to say <laughs> that qualifies as a whole separate garment, but okay. And then here is a, just a really simple tank. I like that it separates. And I also really like that they did it all in one color to make it look like an elasticized waist dress. That's cool because you could wear it like this. You have three outfits here. You wear it like this, you wear the top with jeans, you wear the skirt with the t-shirt, and you've got three different um, outfits. Okay, so it is for wovens, but also for knit. So, uh, chalet, cotton lawn, cotton types, crepe, gauze, silky types, voile, and then it should say knit, colon, jersey, bamboo knit, ITY. but I think you probably need a lot of fabric. So the top is like one and a, let's just call it one and a half. And then the skirt for C is two and three quarters. So that's four yards of fabric. But thankfully you can get some of these jerseys and stuff like that uh, for less than $10 a yard. You can find good quality ones. So. It doesn't have to be super expensive, especially if you can get three outfits out of it. Here's your bust measurement. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not a close fitting top. And then the skirt, the skirt is actually, that can't be right actually, now that I think about it, with an elasticized waist. I mean, maybe. Maybe, I would just check that on the pattern. I would think this would be like in the 50s, considering how, like, look how white it is on her. Oh, it's not gonna let me select the pictures. What is happening? We just did this. Oh my goodness. But look how roomy that is on her. That's got a lot of ease in it. So I don't know what's going on with that, but sizing is six to 14 and then 16 to 24. Cute. Okay, here's Mimi G's. This is the first we've seen of hers. Uh, lime green asymmetrical jumpsuit. So what do we have here? Okay, we have 
like I said, asymmetrical one shoulder with this draped sash and then this little piece coming out of the bottom there and then a puffy sleeve. There's no waist seam. This is all done with princess seams and center seams. So you've got your center front and then you've got these princess seams in the bodice that open out to create the volume in the pant, which is actually really, really cool. I mean, I don't love lime green. I don't love asymmetry. I don't really love puff sleeves or any of this <laughs> accoutrement. But if there was a way for me to hack this into, you know, having another shoulder and taking all this stuff off, I could see myself liking it. Oh, here's a really sweet version. You can kind of get a better idea for it. So yeah, if I could take this off, re like uh, replicate this on the other side, this would be a total winner for me. Super cute. Again, I'm sure she was thinking people would be going to weddings and stuff like that. This is a great option for that. I don't think we're going to get a picture of the back uh, head on. But look at that fit. Go girl. Here's a, a good uh, picture of the sleeve. And then this sleeve. Oh, there's also an inseam pocket. With no waist seam though, you know that that's a teardrop pocket. So I don't know about that. This is really pretty on her. She's had a tough go this month. So lots of love to Mimi G. Just, you know, human to human, woman to woman. But yeah, that's really pretty, right? I would go to Joanne and open up the pattern envelope and see how this is all constructed in order to figure out if I could eliminate that. Replicating one side to the other is easy. You just cut out two of these. Because in the instructions, it's going to tell you to cut one, cut one, cut one. And then on this side, cut one, cut one. So instead, you just cut two of all of these, and now you've got a mirror image. But you'd need to get rid of this. So, Which I don't think would be difficult. I think it's just sewn on like a collar would be, but you never know. Okay. Jumpsuit with shoulder drape detail, puffed or flared sleeve, and length variations. Silky types such as rayon, crepe, soft lightweight linen, <clears throat> poplin, also satin, brocade, and taffeta. That's probably what the lime green is all about. Uh, one, in zip, one invisible zipper is all you need for notions. And then a ton of fabric because you've got all this draping situation and it's a jumpsuit and there's no waist seam and it's a very, very wide leg design. So tons of fabric, uh, very close fitting in the bust and very roomy in the hip. I uh, speak in my language. <laughs> cool. The sizes are six to 14 and then 16 to 24. Cool. Okay, look at this number, jumpsuit and romper. Wow, this is very um, uh, bondage, but I don't hate it, I don't think. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's also in black, which makes it kind of hard to see, but I think what we've got here is I think what's happening is this is a sweetheart neckline with this strap sewn in and then this strap loops through here over here and drapes down and you might have another strap over here oh I can't tell you have a center front seam that wraps around the body to make it a jumpsuit there is not a waist seam from what I can tell. You do have this little slanted pocket and then your pant leg. This is hard to see what's happening. 
this makes it even more difficult to understand, but it looks like elasticated back with this little strapping. You also have this for, okay, so there are two straps. So that's good, something holding it up. And you can see here that there are princess seams that create that pocket. So there's a princess seam coming down like this. And then you have your center front seam. There's a little bit of shaping through here, which is nice. Yeah, it's just really hard to tell what's going on. I don't think you have to do that. I don't think you have to bring it across. Oh, yikes, look at that. <laughs> I say yikes because that just seems like, I don't know, it seems very bondage, very S&M. Um, this is definitely like pushing the simple concept. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think you need to pull this across. You can definitely just pull it up and down and then you would have just like a basic little, you know, jumpsuit uh, without this going across your neck. And then they would just go, yeah, you would have a strap that comes like tied like this and then up and over the shoulder and that's where that is secured. And then you have this one come up and over and it would just go down, kind of like they've done with this one. So it doesn't have to be as like crazy as they're making it seem. Okay, so they're recommending soft, medium weight fabrics such as linen, poplin, sateen, denim, batik, chalet, and crepe. I really do think that, again, that crinkle rayon would be a great option for this. Definitely a crepe, even some of that like rayon twill would be really nice. Or viscose twill. Um, elastic. I think the elastic might go all the way around now. Two D rings or eight D rings, depending on which version you're making. And then, golly, you really don't need much fabric for the romper at all, right? That's a great stash buster. And for what it's worth, you don't have to make it a halter top. You can certainly sew the strapping on the same way for the romper as you do for the jumpsuit. And then even for the jumpsuit, you don't need a ton of fabric. Here's our finished garment measurements. The bust is very close fitting, which is good. The hip could be a little bit roomier, if I'm being honest. I, um, oh, but it only goes up to 20. So it is a roomier hip. Okay. Yeah, size 4 to 20. So I am in the uh, range, but barely. But barely. Interesting. Okay. Come on. Sorry about this, guys. I don't know what is happening. Okay. Yeah, so 4 to 12 and then 12 to 20 on the sizing. I don't know what that's about. That's almost like a, um, like a junior's sizing. Is that what they're going for? Like trying to attract younger people? So they're going really low on the size range? I mean, a 29 bust and... A 55 inch hip well oh no that's a length I'm like wait what a 35 inch bust and a 38 inch hip I mean it's a busty skinny girl that's interesting this size range going all the way down to four Okay, now we have this top with optional draped front. Surprisingly, to myself, I don't hate it. 
I think this is an example of something where they actually got the fabric right. And that really does help highlight the pattern. We have got as close to an actual set in sleeve as I think we're going to get with simplicity. We've got a stand collar, a half placket with three little buttons, this overlay that ties right underneath the bust, and then the rest of the bodice comes down to tunic length. Here it is, all in one shot. Here's the back. What is this? Yikes. So some other options are, oh, hers might button all the way down. Um, sleeveless with a pocket and no overlay or possibly just shorter. Is that what's going on? Yeah, B and C, it looks like they do have buttons that go all the way down, okay. Or at least this far down. A has little notches, so does B. C has littler ones. Yeah, it's a little funky, but interesting. Interesting to the eye, I think. I, I don't know how it would fit into my wardrobe. But again, I don't know. I don't, I don't not like it, which is very surprising to me. <laughs> oh goodness. Six to 14 and then 14 to 22 on the sizing. Let's go back to the um, back of the envelope. Uh, chambray, soft linen, shirtings, wall, also in silky types such as crepe, double georgette, and rayon and six buttons and single fold bias tape. I mean, as expected, the tank top takes like nothing, no fabric, hardly. And then B and C take a little bit more because of that overlay. This is why I don't like making tops like this because I could make a dress out of that and it's hard for me to just invest all that fabric into one separate that I know I have to like match with like pants or skirt or whatever when I could just make a dress from that same yardage. That's just like a mental, a mental thing that I think my frugality <laughs> is just like preventing me from seeing past. And then a very roomy bust. Yeah. Okay. And we've got, I think, just four more. Wow, okay, so we've got a bodysuit and a mini skirt. Those are two very different things, but... Lord, where are you wearing this? Not to Target. Is this a work, is this to work out in? Um, it is a wrap, like crossover bodice with a flutter sleeve, a cutout, and like leggings, basically. Okay. She knows how to make her body look so good, though. I have to give it to her for that. Um, this something ties, I guess the wrap ties. Yeah. I just, I don't know where I'm going in this. Is this for like clubbing? Like to go, I don't go to clubs. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell. Um, but yeah, I guess if you like raved, might as well make your own instead of, you know, buying them. And, but this, this is odd. What, what is this? This goes over? 
I need someone who is much, much, much cooler than me to explain what is happening here. <laughs> is this, do you guys see this when y'all go out? Like, I don't even go, I don't drink at all. So I don't go to bars. I don't go to clubs. I don't go, nightlife is just like non-existent to me. Nightlife for me is like on my sofa watching reality TV shows. So I guess I could wear this doing that. But even that, I think I'd be uncomfortable doing <laughs> in this outfit. I don't know where I'm going or what I'd be doing in this. Here are the line drawings. Look how interesting. I just, I don't understand the skirt. I don't understand how these two things go together. Mrs. Jumpsuit with wrap front and self-tie and pull-on mini skirt. Okay. Four-way stretch knit fabrics only, you think? The skirt can be in Ponte, interlock, and jersey. And then they the waistband is in stretchable rib knit fabric. So it's reminding me of that other dress that had the rib knit midriff. And then you need two packages of quarter inch wide elastic for this jumpsuit. So I'm guessing you're sewing it kind of like a bathing suit or like underwear along the neckline. That's what my guess would be. You need just about two yards of fabric and then for the jumpsuit and then for the skirt, you really don't need much fabric at all. There's negative ease in this jumpsuit. And yeah, that's that. So, okay. Did I do the sizing? Six to 14 and then 16 to 24. I'm surprised it comes in numbers. Okay, moving on. Next up, we have a circle skirt. I feel like she really did get, she drew the short stick at the modeling shoot that day. She's gotten all the weird patterns. Um, okay, so it's a circle skirt with a paper bag waist and a <laughs> belt with flaps. I don't know what this is. And then the skirt, is this a seam with um, flat piping in it? It's really beautifully done. This sateen is stunning. Or is it just top stitched on? It might just be top stitched. I can't tell. They really are embracing the D ring. What is this? Here's the back. It's a little big for her. It's like falling down. You can see. Um, that's really no fault of the pattern. They just didn't match up the fit model. What is this? I need this to be explained. Is it to hold your cell phone? Yeah, it's like a belt bag. Weird. This though, if you just look at the skirt and you take the belt bag off, and you just look at the skirt, uh, yes, we could, those of us who have been sewing for a while can probably make this pattern on our own. We could self draft this, it's not that difficult, but um, if you're new, that's kind of a cool skirt, right? I like the wide, the wide elastic in the, the paper bag waistband. I think that's cool. And then three lengths, it looks like. Yeah, circle skirt in three lengths includes pocket belt, is what they're calling it. Sateen, poplin, chambray, lightweight cotton, linen, silky types, such as rayon and crepes. And then you need one and a quarter inch wide elastic. That is what is in here. I like that. And then bias tape and D-rings for your pocket belt. Fabric requirements. You kind of need a lot for a circle skirt, especially if it's long. Um, so, yeah, four and a quarter yards for this one. And then two-ish, two and a half for the others. Finished length is all they're giving us. 
So, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a little bit Girl Scout with this color combination of the green and the beige. But a circle skirt is pretty universally flattering, very easy to sew. Um, and if you get like a beautiful print or something like that, you can really elevate this a lot. So don't knock it because of the weird pocket belt um, and the kind of basic styling. You could really make an exceptional, very expensive looking skirt um, out of a basic circle skirt pattern like this. Sizing is 6 to 14 and then 14 to 22. All right, we've got another skirt here. This one has a shirred waist, which I think is rather cool. I think I need to try some of this shirring to see what, see what it's all about. Um, this one is long ankle length with a slit very wide and then you have your shirring. Her seems a little crooked. Oh, here she is in another top. That's really no better. Does it does it add volume to wherever it's applied? Like does she look like puffier through here than she really is? I I, I can't tell flattery wise how how it performs. I think I've only ever seen it in a bodice and I've mostly only seen it in like the back of a bodice. So, you know, flattery and volume that it might add has never really occurred to me when it comes to shirred garments. Here's the back. Oh, and there's a version that's shorter with no slit that has a little drawstring and then a long version with no slit. I think that these are seams, these two things, princess seams. So it shouldn't take as much fabric as you might think. No pockets. Chalet, cotton lawn, crepe, double georgette, gauze, silky types, and voile. Extra fabric, okay, we already know that. Thread, one and a quarter yard, three quarter inch wide elastic. I think that goes in the waistband. And then quarter inch wide elastic for each of the shirred sections. And could you, for those of you who have shirred before, could you add more rings of shirring and would that make it less poofy and voluminous? I, I commit that if I get some decent answers from you guys about how all this works, I will do a video explaining it all. Or if you guys, I guess I could do my own research too and just learn about all of this. I don't know. I kind of like you guys just telling me how it works because I know you're going to be real with me. <laughs> I know I'm going to get like honest answers from you all. Like, I don't know if there's going to be any other blog who says that shirring is unflattering, but you guys would tell me if it is or not. Um, but I, I'm feeling like I need to I need to learn about shirring and I need to do a video unless all of you know about this and I'm the only one that's like in the dark about how it works, in which case, please just educate me and <laughs> we can all move on with life. But yeah, I have lots of questions about shirring. Um, OK, and then three packages of half inch wide single fold bias tape. What the heck is that for? And then a ribbon. Oh, it's the same. You need bias tape for the other shirt one, too. What are they having you do with all that bias tape? My goodness. Um, so fabric wise, yeah, like I said, you still need a lot of fabric. I mean, it is a voluminous long skirt, you see, but you don't need as much as you probably think. Two and a quarter up to three and a, three quarters. And then finish length is all we're going to get on this one. Yeah, I think I'm intrigued by this only because I don't know anything about how this works. So I would be interested to try this pattern just to see what that is like, if it's comfortable, if it's flattering, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
But I'm also intrigued because the reason why I don't like skirts that much is because of the waistbands. So if this eliminates that, then that would be great. And then the standard sizing. Okay, last one, I think, because we're not going to do the kiddos. Yeah, or costumes. All right, last one. Mrs. Pull-On Pants. So we've got... You guys, these are very, very cute, but I have to tell you, I have like three or four patterns like this already. Nothing new, but for the sake of those of you who might not have them, this is a princess seam, flat front. I think the elastics probably start maybe right here and go around the back to the other side. You've got this adorable self belt with the belt loops. Love that detail. And the pocket is in the princess seam. There are no side seams, that's cool. And there might not be an inseam. Here's the back. The fit is okay, considering, you know, these were not made specifically for her. And this is a linen fabric, a linen stripe. What is with these line drawings? Why are they all wrinkly down here? <laughs> That's weird. Uh, okay, so yeah, everything that I went over, flat front. It doesn't show, oh, here it does, where the elastic starts. So you can see that detail there. This one, I think they're either having you put in piping or top stitching. And then the belt. Pull on pants with side panel and tie options. Batik, chambray, chino, cotton types, double gauze, lightweight denim, linen types, seersucker. And thread and one to one and a quarter wide elastic for your waistband. Let's see, two and a quarter ish up to two and a half, depending on the length, no big deal. Your finished hip measurement yeah, again, it's close. Yeah, this is a this is a pretty close fitting hip. I mean, you can see here that there's not a lot of ease across this hip measurement for her. So yeah, it's a pretty, even though it's got an elastic waist, it's still pretty. I mean, it's not a skinny jean or a legging with negative ease, but it's it's pretty close fitting. All right. 6 to 14, and then 14 to 22. They are cute, especially how they sewed them with the stripes going in all the different directions. It's really nice. And you don't have to worry so much about matching. Um, if you were going to do horizontal on both, then you'd worry about them matching across here or across your side seam if you had a pattern with a side seam. So this is a good way to get around that. And I think it makes it a little bit more flattering, too to not have, obviously to not have the stripes going horizontal all the way up, but um, just some visual interest to kind of break up the wideness of your bottom half, if you have a wide bottom half. But that is it, you guys. Those are our Simplicity Summer Patterns. What did you think? I kind of feel like we, things got a little bit better as the longer we kept going. Um, but again, if we're thinking about, we're, we're, I'm trying to give Simplicity credit for what they're trying to be and not criticize them for being something that they're not. So if they are the company that is going to be the basic, simple designs that are easy for anybody to sew, beginner on up, um, they did a really good job with that. I mean, some of these dresses... If you made them and you were a new sewist, people weren't familiar that you made your own clothes, I think people would be really, really impressed that you were able to pull that off. So they, they took uh, simple sewing techniques and applied it 
to designs with, you know, a lot of visual interest and, um, like, design sensibility, right? Um, so, with all of that said, let me know what you think of the collection in the comment section below. Again, remembering that we're talking about simple patterns, talking about basic patterns, talking about easy to sew patterns. Um, they may be boring to you, but you know, consider we all started somewhere. But okay, so yeah, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye.